Okay, in this video I am going to show you how to um, take a flat pattern from Marvelous Designer and retopologize it in Sketch Retopo and then turn it into a 3D mesh in Maya. Um, this is one of my favorite ways to retopologize because uh, it's actually easier to retopologize something that is flat versus something that is 3D. Um, and so I just made a, uh, an example, an example dress and um uh you know particle distance 20 um and um you know and the and the collision i have set to five uh defaults like 2.5 but i find five is better because it gives you a little bit more breathing room between the the clothes and the skin so you have less chance to have uh poke through so um okay so before you export out because I, I, you export out the three-dimensional dress or the clothing, and then you export out the flat pattern as well. Uh, uh, and then, but to, before you do that, you want to make sure that you go into UV Editor, you select your patterns, try to get them as close together as possible, and then right mouse click, and then you click Fit to zero to one. Okay. Now what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that the UVs are in the normal uh, UV space uh, from zero to one. Otherwise, they'll be real big and they'll be sticking out here and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's a, it's a mess. <laughs> Doesn't work very well. Okay. Okay. So once you do that, you come back here to simulator, and you uh, select your patterns, and you export them out as a flat object. Oh no. You're, we're exporting out the three-dimensional. You're you're selecting the patterns, but we we're, we've selected the three. It's the three-dimensional. Um, so you go selected objects, and then you export out uh, 3D dress, and we'll say yes. We want to replace it because I've done this like four times now. <laughs> selected patterns. You want welded single object, then UV coordinates, uh, unified UV coordinates. Um, uh, uh, I do DAS, CM, uh, invert the X, Z up, and then Y, and then um, you click OK. OK, then to do the uh, flat pattern, um, you just click on that to get the flat pattern. Now it's in the flat, uh, the flat shape. Export it out again, um, and then we'll say flat, and you say yes, and but this time we want to unweld. All the other uh, settings are the same. You say yes, okay, and I'm going to Control Z to get it back. Okay, now we'll go to 3D uh, Sketch Retopo. Now I'm not going to retop retopologize all this on camera. Um, now this has been retopologized, okay. Um, and this is what the retopology looks like, okay? Um, but I have other videos showing how to retopologize, and you can watch. There's other videos out there by other by the people who created Sketch Retopo. Nice little short uh, tutorials. They don't say um so much <laughs> as I do, um, or as often as I do. Um, but uh, yeah, so they got really nice tutorials, so you'll have to watch those. But you end up with a pattern something like this. Okay, and then you would export out that that flat pattern, you know. Um, and now I'm going to go over. Oh, let me pause the video. Go over to Maya. Okay, so here we are in Maya, and I've already imported all the meshes. Um, here's the three-dimensional dress from Marvelous Designer. Here is the flat version from Marvelous Designer, and here is the retopo version from Sketch Retopo. Okay, one of the things you'll notice when you import from Sketch Retopo is these lines are thicker. And these lines correspond with uh, the curves. Okay, and um, these curves, you know, inside these curves like is, this is a patch, this is a patch, this is a patch, this is a patch. And these correspond with those patches. Well, those patches are all 
separate objects. They, they are combined into one object, but they have not been merged. Um, if we were to go to vertex, you see that there's two vertices selected. So first thing you need to do is merge them. Okay, now that that's merged and a threshold of 0 0.01 is fine, now they're merged. Okay, and I delete history. Okay, and you'll notice, you know, here's the 3D dress. Let's open up the UV editor. You'll notice that the 3D dress and the flat 2D dress have the same exact UVs. Okay and how we set them up to be in 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Okay, but the sketch retapu dress, oh, I hate it when that does it, when that becomes unlocked from there, there we go. Okay, the sketch retapu dress doesn't have any UVs. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to transfer the UVs from the flat Marvelous Designer dress to the Sketch Retapo dress. And so you select the, the flat uh, Marvelous Designer dress. That's what MD stands for, Marvelous Designer. Uh, hold down the Control key and select the uh, Sketch Retapo flat. Come here to Mesh, Transfer Mesh Attributes. Okay, now we're not transferring the per, 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 positions, vertex positions. We want to transfer the UV sets, and we'll just do the current. Um, all is if you had more than one UV set on the mesh, which you actually can, um, but Second Life only uses one, and so all is fine or current is fine, doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to use world space. You could use local. I don't even know what the difference is between the two. If it makes a difference, I've done both. It doesn't seem to make any difference, so I'm just going to use world. And uh, we're going to use closest point. And you just click apply. And we can close that. And now, you see, we have the UVs on here. Now, if these were looking all messed up, and it didn't look just like the outline of the UVs on the um, Marvelous Designer, what that means is... Um, is if you go to UV, that means that the UVs, if you if this was the the problem, when you would select this UV, you would see two UVs selected instead of one. It means that the UVs, I think that's what unified means maybe on the exporting out of the options, um, but it means that the the UVs uh, were not merged. So just you know, you just in UV mode, select all the UVs, and then just go cut so, and you click merge. You know, and the default is just fine. Um, and and then you can transfer the attributes, um, delete history, and then transfer the attributes, and it should work just fine then. Okay. Okay. So um, once you have your UVs transferred over, you're going to want to, in object mode, you want to go to delete history. That will get rid of the the uh, node for the, the UV transfer, and it's very important that you do that, otherwise it will get messed up when we turned it into a 3D shape. Um, and so, okay, so we have that there, and so we can get rid of, or hide the flat version of that. And you don't even have to have the 3D version visible. Uh, because the next we're going to do is we're going to transfer attributes of the vertex position of the 3D dress. Well, I guess I should have kept it visible for the demonstration. Um, we're going to transfer the vertex position uh, to our flat version using uh, transfer attributes again. So select the 3D version, select the 2D version. And I'm going to hide the 3D dress because it's just easier to see. Okay, it's still selected. It's just that we've had it hidden and you don't have to have it visible. Um, and then you go Mesh, 
transfer attributes. And this time we are going to tran we, we are going to turn on vertex position and turn off UV sets. And we're not going to use the world space. We're going to use the UVs themselves. That's why they have to both have the same overall UV pattern, the same basic shape. And then you just click apply and boom, you saw. See, let me control Z, get it back and see, do it again, apply, boom. It is now taken on the 3D shape. Okay, we can close this. We don't need that open. And um, again, select the mesh and because it has this transfer attributes node, we want to delete the history to get rid of that node. So now the, the original 3D mesh um, is not connected to our retopologized mesh. Okay, and so at this point um, we can start to do things. I would highly recommend merging uh, merging the um, vertices and because this is low poly it will be really easy to merge um, because you won't have so many vertices too close together. So okay so we want to go to display mesh. Um, I'm going to soften the edges first and then I'm going to merge. Okay and 0.01 is the is by default um, the default and you can see that's not big enough threshold so one turns out to be just perfect and so that will do that if you make the default position too big like say we make it two see how these merge together and you don't want that so we'll just change this back to one and then go back in object mode and look around it's also a good idea now you notice how you have a sharp edge here but that's because we merged two borders together and um, let's soften the edge again and now is really where you if there was a problem it would appear as a hard edge if there was a problem where two edges were not merged together and everything looks fine so awesome okay so that's how to get the basic shape but now we want to add more resolution you know uh, we want to add um, especially like to the breast area see how it's kind of it's too jaggedy too too blocky um, and the opening of the neck is not nice and smooth you know and so um, I want to show you how to add resolution so if you go to face and we're just gonna select these and we have it it's nice even it goes all the way around um, theoretically you don't need a high resolution in here but that's okay we're just I'm just this is demonstration purposes and actually that wouldn't be bad um, and so most people would be tempted at this point to um, use smooth to add detail and that does smooth it out but that's actually not the shape of the avat of the mesh clothing itself and it messes up the UVs which will cause a problem when we do because we're going to transfer the shape again um, uh, and if we look at the UV editor you can see the UVs have a sawtooth pattern here at the bottom and if we were to transfer the shape again and because we uh, I just have to click here I don't have to go into the options again because we're just doing the same thing we did last time see how it changed shape let me do that and redo it see how it changed shape but also look down here now we have a sawtooth and if you look closely enough it does affect the shading when light bounces off of it and that's something that we do not want okay so I'm going to control Z back okay so you don't want to use smooth what you want to use is you want to use add divisions okay so I'm going to open up add divisions and I like using linear 
you can use exponentially. Um, you know, you can do that. Um, but I happen to like linear. It gives you a little bit more control because if you need a lot more resolution, you can increase in, you can increase it like that. Okay. Uh, U is um, horizontal in the UVs and V is uh, vertical. So um, this is adding four uh, times as much in the U, but not in the V. But this, just do the same for both. Um, so we're going to double the, the resolution, and if we hit apply, it it uh, now the UVs look good. You'll notice it still is blocky. Um, you know it still looks blocky there, so we're going to transfer the attributes again. And now we've got the shape. Okay. Um, and I'm going to close this because we don't need it. Okay, so we've added resolution here so that our breasts are nice and smooth, and so is the neck opening and the arm openings, and we need to add more resolution to the butt area, because <laughs> that's especially when people make their butts bigger. This is gonna, this is this is already not high enough resolution, um, so you just go face, oops, face, and we'll select from there to there and I try to make it the same on both sides so we don't need that or that and that looks good okay so that looks good so uh, we can apply add divisions there again and it's not going to mess up the um, it's not going to mess up the UVs. So now we can do the same thing here again. Uh, oh, we'll transfer the UVs yet again because you see it didn't update. We still have the old transfer um, uh, a bit on there and I don't think you can update it. No you can't update it through here. You got to do it again. And you can have more than one on there so I'll delete history after we do this. Whoops, maybe I'm not in the transfer attributes. Okay, let me do this again. There to there, mesh, transfer attributes, and there, her butt is nice and smooth. Okay. Okay, so now that we have that, um, uh, and we, we can delete the history again, because it's always good to be deleting history as you go along the way. Okay. Okay, um, so we need to insert some edge loops because if you look down here, um, there's it's not a nice smooth curve, and skin is going to poke through here because uh, we don't have enough resolution, um, enough detail. So we want to insert uh, an edge loop, you know. So you can go to Tools, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and uh, let's reset the tool. Okay, so it's been reset. The easiest way I found is to um, turn on uh, multiple edge loops and turn this down to one. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to automatically uh, put it right at the 50%, right in the middle. Okay, and uh, and then I also, if you do insert edge flow, although we're going to be transferring the, the shape, uh, again and so um, oh, I guess you can't do insert edge flow, edge flow when you do that um, uh, but we're going to be transferring the shape again anyway so it doesn't matter you can't do insert edge flow so see it does it automatically right at the 50 percent boom and it does it all the way up and we're going to be connecting these together in a second and there you go boom there I would do another one here here and uh, to there, I don't think, can we, no, we can't, whoops, uh, could we, so we'll have to do, we'll have to connect these manually, um, but that will give us a much smoother edge flow, maybe we want to do that there, and so we'll do one there, 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 
there and there. I think that's the, the number that we did. And that's three, three. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. Oh, well, I'll do one or two and I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Um, okay, so if we come in here to the interactive split tool and I have set my magnetic tolerance a little bit higher so it's it's a little less sensitive it will snap better so enter G to repeat enter whoop, G to repeat there to there there to there and I'm gonna pause the video while I do this okay or, or um, so you could do it that way you could connect it that way or let me show you the other way you can you can do it you can leave it so that these don't actually connect but it's up to you okay so this here has five sides it's no longer a quad it's an n-gon it has more than five sides and um, and you need to make it so that it's not an n-gon and I find the best way of making it not an n-gon there's two different approaches there's the amateur approach which is which is kind of down and dirty and um, it'll work just fine for Second Life which is using uh, the interactive split mesh again and you go here to there and you kind of make this it I know it looks like a sawtooth pattern but it, it won't end up being a sawtooth pattern and you do that and now whoops, these are now connected and they're all triangles we've triangulated um, uh, this okay um, and you go all the way around uh, and that will so that you don't have any end gons okay and so there's that way and that's the kind of the down the dirty the bad way is that you can't really you can't subdivide again once you do this because you, you're no longer in all quads the other way of doing it which is the how the how a professional would do it or one way a professional would do it would be to uh, use the same tool but to we have four quads and we want it to go down into two so you start there and there's a 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent there okay and hit enter and then you go into edge mode and you select this edge and this edge and then you uh, delete vertex edges now these are all quads this is all quads and you could subdivide this again if you needed to um, add divisions it will be it will look nice and smooth you know so we could here uh, we could uh, do um, the same thing here 50 50 50 I'm saying 50 because it's 50 percent here it's because I have my magnetic tolerance um, in there and just hit enter edge here and here and then we delete edge point so now we have quads here you know I mean really we could have connected this to here but I'm just showing you how you can keep things being quads you know how you can keep things being quads without losing uh, the ability to subdivide so like I said that's the more professional way of doing it and you can just continue on all the way across And then go 
go into edge mode and here, 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 here. There you go, and then we can make the object uh, smooth mesh or soften edge. I'm sorry, and there you go. Now you have nice quads, and that's the more prof the more the professional's way of doing it, because um, now we can subdivide again, and it will subdivide very nicely. And while if you do the zigzag pattern it will not subdivide the, you can't subdivide a triangle into into small into a smaller amount so it just it just won't but you can a quads you can subdivide evenly so you could, if you needed to add more detail you could um, and um, you know so that's how to get more detail and again you could come here and you could transfer the attributes again. And there we go. Now, say you needed um, a little bit more resolution in the waist here. Again, we can go to we could go to insert edge loop, and we could go here, and we could add a little more detail there. You know. Um, and as you see, because it's a quad, it it was able to do the edge loop, insert edge loop. If it was a triangle, it, it wouldn't go any farther. Um, and then you could, again, transfer attributes. Why is it not working? Oh, I'm not, I'm not in object mode. I still have the other tool on. Okay. 3D there. And then you do this transfer attributes because again just so you remember we're doing pos positions using the UV space and there we got a little bit smoother so you can add detail just where you need it so that you're working efficiently um, and it's a very nice way to read topologize because it's much easier to read topology something that's flat than something that is 3d and you know where the, the from the UV pattern you know where the hard corners are going to be you know where there's going to be like almost a 90 degree or 90 degree or just a, sh a sharp corner is going to be so it makes it so much easier to read topologize something that's flat and low poly and then add the resolution just where you need it, you know. Um, I mean, if I wanted a little bit better edge flow, I would have, I could have taken this into, um, say, uh, 3D Coat and pushed some of these edge loops so they, they followed the uh, this fold here a bit better, you know. If you really want to get down and dirty, you can use the insert here and cut in whoops cut in a new a new edge if you really really wanted to I mean this is this is down and dirty this is not what a professional would do okay <laughs> You know, I'm just showing you some of the down and dirty techniques that are probably would theoret are theoretically working. You know, uh, it it does work. Um, transfer attributes, and see now we have that smooth and. 
um, deform, or not deform, soften edge. And now we got a better, nicer fold. A little bit better. Not, not, not that great. But I mean, you can do things like that. You can cut in more detail just where you need it. Of course, this is now a triangle, and that's a triangle. So, um, but you can add detail just where you need it if you really needed to do something like that. Um, you could. Not recommending it. It's not the way a professional uh, would do it. But we're talking Second Life here. And sometimes what you don't see, you know, time is money, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not a, I'm not averse to doing shortcuts, you know, but yeah, you can do stuff like that, you know, to where you get something that looks better. Um, and... You could even come in here, and we don't need this edge now. So we could delete that edge. Or, because you know it's going to get triangulated eventually, uh, it would probably be better if it was going this way. So you could spin the edge backwards so that it, it's better for uh, the edge flow. See? And like this one, I'd probably do the same thing with that one. That's better for the edge flow. And probably the same with this one. Oops. Did we create an end gun? No. Uh, I would probably just delete this edge and delete this edge because this is a quad and this is a quad. And we don't need it. And then, so now our, we got, and this is still a quad. This is a triangle. So that's okay. So you can, there, that's better. So you can do stuff like that, where you can cut in edge flow and then play with spinning spinning edges of triangles, or, or yeah, uh, um, to where you end up with something that has nicer edge flow and more detail where you need it. Um, this is as if we just triangulated it beforehand, because if it went this way, it wouldn't look as good, I don't think. It's better to edge flow here. So we just pre-triangulated this one. So... Um, but you get the idea, you know, um, to where you can put the detail just where you need it and not where you don't need it. And so, awesome. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's just give you some tips on how to uh, subdivide it, you know, to get more detail in areas that you need, how to... Um, make it nice in more of the professional way here, or you can use the zigzag pattern um, the way I showed it to you, and you can do it that way. Um, you know, you can uh, also select from like from here. Oh, that's right. Got to select them all manually because these are not quads anymore, so you, you got to select them manually. And then you could triangulate there. See, that's the zigzag pattern. Um, but like this, this edge here, I'd probably want to rotate forward. 
spin forward so that it's more doing the same pattern. Yeah, same thing with this one. Get the G key to repeat. And so now we don't have any any more n-gons and we controlled and we saw where their problems were uh, by by pre this is sort of pre uh, triangulating but then you control exactly where it is so that when you see it it doesn't have any weird um, sort of patterns or modeling not mo mo modeled modeled uh, look to it it's nice and smooth reflects the light well um, and so yeah you can sort of see and then you end up with something that is much more efficient um, than it would have been otherwise and you put the detail just where you needed it not where you don't need it and it's so it it doesn't look it's fairly low poly in that you know it's only 3,000 triangles is how much it would be if we triangulated it right now and and 3,000 triangles for a dress like this is pretty efficient and the great thing about that is um, it's going to be easier to rig because you have fewer vertices to have to worry about the weighting too so it'll be easier to rig and it will cause less lag I know a lot of people don't worry about land impact you know because they say, oh, well, your avatar is wearing it. Land impact doesn't affect it. It doesn't. That it doesn't. It the land impact doesn't affect it, but the number of triangles in a mesh does affect lag. The more triangles an avatar is wearing, the more lag that avatar is producing for not only itself but other people around it. Um, so even though there's basically almost no limit to the number of triangles. I mean, it's ridiculously high. It's like millions of triangles that an avatar can wear. It's just going to contribute to lag, you know. Um, so making stuff that is that is fairly low poly that looks, if you know what you're doing, doesn't look low poly, you know, will just help out Second Life not have as much lag, you know, and makes everybody's uh, experience better. So, yeah, so that's how to take a flat, yeah, well, you know what I mean, I don't have to repeat myself, uh, flat to 3D and increase its resolution and how to, um, a couple of tech, different techniques to cap off the ends uh, where it transitions from higher to lower, uh, if that's what the, no, it's not really capping off the ends, but you know what I mean, um, and how to do it where you can maintain the quads and how you can do it if you just want to do it down and dirty um, if you're happy with the resolution and you know you're not going to change need to change it more to pre-triangulate it and to get uh, the triangle flow nice so that they're going the right way how to add some detail in an area by cutting in edges in the direction of the uh, of the fold you know um, and so that, uh, yeah, so that you can do all sorts of stuff like that so that you end up with mesh that is easier to rig and causes less lag. So, awesome! Well, I guess that's about it. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.